Hello. This week we have a text from the coming from the gospel according to Luke chapter 16 verses 1 to 13. And just the way we call this text says a lot about our vision of the text or how we address the text because some call it the story the parable of the shrewd manager some other is the unjust manager, the deceitful manager, the resourceful manager. Just that. It says a lot, like I said. Maybe there's so many titles and so many interpretations because this is one of the parable, this is one of the story Jesus tells his disciple that really baffle people. Mostly because the two main characters are not necessarily nice individual. They're, they're closer to anti-hero. First, we have a rich man. We don't know much about the rich man, but he's rich. He seems to have uh, a lot of people who owe him a lot of money, does not seem, or does not seem to be a big problem. And the rich man has a manager. And there's... Uh, suspicion, some accusation of malversation, that manager would not use the money as it should be. Anyway, so the manager, the, the owner said, well, I will have to fire you. And the manager said, well, what should I do? You know, I don't want to work. I don't want to beg. So he, he called people and he raised the debts of a lot of people, but it's not his money. It is the owner money. So, and, and he does not have authority to do this. And he said, well, maybe they will like me a little. Maybe it will improve my situation. And by the end, the owner praised the manager. Uh, everybody is happy. Happy end. It's very, very surprising. And a lot of interpretation tried to understand. Okay, um... What about the money? What the money means? Or, or who's God in this story? And is God the, the owner? Is God the manager? And, but the more I think about it, it's not about money. And it's not about God. This story is about us. How sometimes we wrap ourselves in our correctness, in our righteousness, righteousness. And we seem to lose the point. I will give you an example. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church have canonized uh, Mother Teresa a few weeks ago. And some peop many people were happy about this, and but some people were criticizing the, because it's a well-known fact that Mother Teresa accepted money from some of the uh, dictator of this world, like Mubudu of uh, Duvalier. And, and some people said, well, that was tinted money. She should not have accepted that money from those horrible people. And the other question should be, so what's the alternative? To let literally people die on the street of India? Is that, is that what you're advocating? And, and I think that's also in this case. A lot of people were freed from their debts or a huge part of their debts. Yes, it did not come from a movement of the art. The manager had a self was a have an agenda, <laughs> was hoping to gain something from this generosity. But the bottom line is that there's a lot of people that had less debt, a better quality of life. And sometimes in our churches, in our context, we have to ask the question, what's the big goal? What's, what's the big picture? What's the ultimate aim? Do we want to be right? Or do we want to change the world and build what Jesus came to proclaim and, and call the kingdom of God, the realm of God? And sometimes we lose sight of this. We forget. We think that, well, we're better, we have higher standards, and, 
and we wish that everybody everything followed the proper protocol the proper route all everything is aligned but sometimes life does not happen that way sometimes we have to make decision sometimes we have to prioritize it does not mean that anything goes it does not mean that we sell out it just means that we need to remember what's our ultimate goal here. And if someone come to help us, maybe not with the value or the motivation we wish, but if someone can help us, maybe we should look at this. Well, that's it for today. And just want to say I'm the lectionary man, Stéphane Vermette, and I wish you a great week. I hope I will see you next week and talk to you soon. Bye.